My name is Steve. I'm the director of training and events here at Blue River and slash Mira. And I'm going to talk about Mira 7 display objects. How many people are actually using Mira 7 right now in the room? Yes. How many of you have actually used a display object? How many of you created one? All right. That's, see, see how the hands kind of slowly started coming down? That's good. That's all right. Um, I've already got the repo going. I might make a few tweaks to it for you, but uh, for those of you that like to go to GitHub and grab some code samples, I've got some out there, of course. And don't worry, um, we'll have all this stuff out there available for you, uh, and I have a slide at the end as well. So why would you want to do, first of all, why would you even want to consider using display objects? So first of all, in Mira now with version 7, some of you that have built plugins, this should look kind of familiar. These are essentially self-contained displays, all right? They are portable, meaning you can actually carry them in your pocket, right, on a USB, all right? And then you can take them over to some other machine, pop in that USB, and copy those files over and create a new display object. They're also distrib distributable via plugins. Some people are thinking, if you ask me, ask me why, would I, why should I build any more plugins? Well, the thing, if you don't build it as a plugin, okay, what ends up happening is that display object, you'd have to maintain those files under site A, you'd have to maintain those same files under another site, like site B or C or D and E and F, right? If you have, had all your dis different uh, display objects that you are sharing across multiple sites within a uh, plugin, you've only got one place to manage that. And now you can actually, or, or unless you're you know, a little more savvy and everything is tied to a repo, but even then, you still have to go into every single site, right, and do a little git pull and all that other stuff, right, unless you had some automated hook process and everything else. So anyway, I, I'm, what I'm here to tell you is plugins are here to stay. They're not going anywhere because that's a question that I've been getting. So they are distributable just like a plugin, but they are also distrib distributable with plugins as well. And here's the best part. It can be an actual entire application. How many of you were in here for Ryan's view talk? Okay. Did you see how he was able to pull in essentially almost like a built-in self-contained little uh, application using view? I'm going to do something very similar uh, for you as well. For those of you that haven't really had a chance, because there, there's uh, still some people that haven't played with Mira 7 yet, you can very easily now create these display objects uh, that are baked into Mira just by going to your front end. By the way, they are all managed from the front end now um, by going to the inline edit mode, and you'll get that little panel onto the side, okay, where then you can go ahead and just click, drag, and drop whatever display object you want. The best part is, these are the baked in ones, but you can create your own. And that's what I'm here to show you to do in about 15 minutes now, okay? So how about I create a super duper simple example? Anybody want to see one? Yeah? All right, good, because I do too. I hope I know what I'm doing. All right, so what I'm going to do is, for those of you that wanted to follow along, um, let me see, will this work? Woo, check that out. All right, so I can go under my site ID, whatever it is I'm working with, say, say default includes. I could go under my display objects directory here, maybe go under display objects and custom, but I like to keep my, all my display objects within my theme, all right? So I'll go under my themes and then my theme name, which happens to be Mira Bootstrap 3, right? Everybody probably used that at some point. And then I have a display objects directory. Now, does anybody see this other directory in here that I've got called Bower Components? Anybody using Bower? It's a few, oh, just a couple, all right. Well, so Bower is uh, another technology for another day, all right? But ultimately what it does is it manages all kinds of really cool projects and so forth that you can um, share across and distribute across uh, various display objects, if you will. Now, here's the kicker. <clears throat> when you have multiple display objects underneath your display objects directory and you want to use some common files across those, I suggest creating another directory, whether you keep it under your display objects or under your theme somewhere, something like that. For example, if you're using Vue or some of these other things, you don't want to have 10 different uh, display objects with the whole Vue framework installed with every single display object. Am I right? Right? Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So you want to find a common, common ground for those. That's just a little tip from me to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little folder and I'm going to create a folder called Super duper display. 
There's only two files that are required here. One is, the first one is called the index.cfm file. And I'll just put in a little uh, super duper display. This better work. <laughs> I always like doing live coding. All right. So now the other file that I need is for Muir to, to discover this directory, okay, and discover the fact that this is indeed a display object to be shown in that little panel on the right hand side. And this file is called the config xml.cfm file. Okay? And now what you put in here is a little Mira tag. All right? And then we have to give our display object a name. So I'll call mine super duper simple display. Now, here's the cool part. I can actually tell Mira what content types I want to use. If I put a little star, right, a little wild card, that means all content types. If I want to limit this to just page, I can say page. If I want to limit this to where this, this thing is only available on folders, I can say folder. And for those of you that have used class extensions and custom content types, you can say folder slash books or something like that, or bookshelf or whatever you want in here to limit this display object to that specific content type. Does that make sense? Head bobs are good, people. Head bobs, waking up. Yeah, all right. We're almost at the end of the day. Yeah, hang in. All right. And then the last thing that I'm going to go ahead and put in here that is not required at all, but I, who likes icons? Right? I like icons. So we, there's another one called uh, uh, cla icon class. I'm going to, yeah. And then we, instead of font awesome for like, F, anybody using font awesome out there, right? You know, FA for font awesome, we use MI for Muir icon. And I'll just put, I'll just make mine simple. And I know you can't see that. I kind of wrapped around there a little bit. And that's my fault. Sorry about that. Let me see what happens when I make that big. Is it going to blow anything up? No. So let's do this. I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. Test, 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 test. Hey, we're back. Woo! That wasn't so bad, right? <clears throat> Hi, I'm Steve. No, OK, so anyway, so I've got our little icon class here. And so and I can go ahead and put these on separate lines so you can see these better, OK? So here I've got just a little, little mirror tag, all right? So that's all I need. Now, for mirror to discover any of these config xml.cfm files, what we need to do is we need to actually go to our browser we need to go to our browser. OK, there we go. And we need to go ahead and fire up. Uh, whoa. Just a moment. I think my display just went kind of wonky on me here. All right, here we go. Ooh, no, not that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Options, show, where? Steve, what was the name of that site you're Sorry. Config.xml.cfm. What? Click the wrong one there. All right. So now I need to reload my application in order for Mira to pick up this, this new display object that I created. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to mosey to the About page because I like putting stuff over here on this page. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little inline edit. And would you look at this? Oh, there's my super duper simple display object, right? OK, so what can I do with this? I can drag this and I can put it wherever I want. I can put it in line with content. I can put it over here in the left-hand column if I want to. And look at that. And now I can publish this. And there's my display. Hand claps are good. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right, so now what I can do is, if, and this is, this is, I know, like a very common developer theme, right? We got it working. Woo! I'm going to use Steve's simple duper display and then take off and do whatever I want in here. Yes, you can. OK? Because now you make that refresh, and there you go. Kind of slick, right? Woo! Yeah, see? You, you can keep clapping. I'm, I'm good with that. All right, so now 
I'm going to show you a little bit more though, because what you can actually do is, first of all, let me show you um, out on our docs website. Uh, and by the way, we do have docs. We have some docs anyway. So if you go to the docs.getmira.com, you'll see we do have a link to the Mira 7 docs now. Wait, what? Yes, there's some Mira 7 docs. They're not all completely done, but there are some there. Okay. Um, one in particular, uh, Michael, thank you very much. You're in the room. Uh, Michael helped us put together this little uh, uh, markup conventions. And in case you're interested, there is a section here called Custom Display Object Configurators that gives you information on how to create a custom configuration panel for your display object. Whoa. All right, so what does that mean? I, I just said a lot right there. So that means I can actually have a file in here called configurator. Okay. All right. And now I can go ahead and put in some type of form fields, right? So I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to cheat. I don't cheat often. And uh, when I do, I tell everybody I did. All right. So here I've got this, and then um, I've got, I'm going to have, go ahead and put my little, I have to see a param this here, and I'll go, go ahead and give this a name, and uh, this is going to be object params dot example text, example text, and default equals blank, save that, and now when I refresh, do an inline edit, click on this, I have my super, dippled, super duper <laughs> simple display object configurator that's not picking up my information here just yet. So uh, let's take a look here and maybe I need to do an app reload. I may have copied and pasted something incorrectly somebody saw. Yeah, I think I just have to do an app reload. Yes, I do. So you have to do an app reload when you add your configurator file and look at that, you can enter some text. So I'll say, Hi, everyone. You can say hi back, by the way. Hi, Steve. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and publish this. And now I don't have anything coming out here, but if I go ahead and do my inline edit and select that display object, you'll see it saved that text for me. All right? So now I'm going to show you how to pull it out. Do you guys want to see how to pull it out and pull it into your display object? Yeah, of course you do, right? So I'm going to go to my display objects index file. And just like I had up here, I had this little object params uh, piece here, and I, I, this, is, this is just for protection in case for some reason something goes wonky and it didn't come in. So then I can go ahead and put down here, and I'll put uh, a little H4, you said, and I'll do a little H1. And I'll put my little ESAPI in code as Eddie told us to do, okay, HTML, not HTML. And I'll say object text and hashtag. And what else do I think I need in here? Some CF output tags, right? Because if I don't do that, we will be in trouble. All right. So now I shouldn't have to re reload. Oh my goodness, look at that. Check that out. Do you see it says, hi, everyone? All right, so if I go and do my inline edit again, check this out. Watch what happens. You ready? Hi, back. Tab out of there. Oh, I didn't even publish it yet, and it automatically updated. Is that not cool? That's way cool. All right, so you're, you're just, you're, you're right now, your head's swimming. You've got all kinds of cool ideas going on. I know you do. But I'm just also going to show you, as I said before, I've got some slides with uh, some extra uh, data and information out there under that GitHub project that I just showed you. So github.com slash Steve Withington slash Mira 7 hyphen display hyphen objects. I know it's really easy to remember. So some good stuff here. But what I'm going to show you is some other display objects that you can play around with, okay, just for time's sake, I'm going to grab these, okay, and I'm just going to drag all of them up into my display objects directory, and that seemed to get my emoji rain one, let me grab my Google Maps one, my Wonderground one, and my YouTube one. Oh, you guys are going, wow, he's got some cool display objects, I want to see, right? I do too, because these are cool. So now what you got to do is you got to do an app reload first, all right? 
So I'm going to reload my application. I'm going to go ahead and do my little inline edit. I'll get rid of this little super duper dis display one. <gasps> Look at all these new ones I've got in here. Check those out. I've got a Wonderground. Anybody heard of Wonderground? It's a weather place, right? So like, no big deal, right? But it is when you can go ahead and, it is when you can go ahead and get the weather. Right? So, and then I, oh, wait, you want, you want, you want another one? Okay. You want another one right here? Okay. Well, you want Sac, no, you want San Diego, right? Because I know we got some SoCal people running around in here somewhere. So now I'm going to publish this and you'll see, look, there's Sacramento weather and San Diego. What? That's so cool, right? Is this cool, guys? I think it's cool. What else do we have? Oh, you mean you can just drag a map onto this? Oh, no way, look at this. And oh, wait, what happens when I control the zoom too? Yes, I created my own custom slider. So you can have to look at my code to check out how I did that. All right, I'm not gonna give it away. But here's my final, uh, let me see, which else did I have? I had, oh, YouTube, you guys like YouTube? Anybody go to YouTube? I do. Oh. I probably shouldn't have that one on there, right? Okay, so I'll get that out of there. But, <laughs> so, who likes emojis? I like, yeah, exactly, your nine-year-olds do. So this is when you create a website for your nine-year-old. Make it rain emojis! <laughs> okay, stop the rain, stop the rain. All right, so I'm gonna stop the rain. Oh, but your daughter wants to make your emojis bigger, right? Make them rain huge. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Mom. What do you think? It's kind of cool, like kind of useful. <laughs> Everybody's like, Wait. and if I see this on your websites, I will seriously have fun with that. So, all right. So now I'm gonna just publish this, and so yeah, people can just have fun going. Oh, I love that. What do you think? All right. Woo. All right. So as I said. There's all kinds of great data and information in here. Um, I don't really have time for Q&A, but I will give you two questions. Anybody have questions? To the highest bidder. Who? What? To the highest bidder. To the highest bidder? No. Mr. Evan. Are there any plans so we can make it so that we can hide default collection Layouts, that's a great suggestion. You can put it in the info box on GitHub and we will mark it as a feature request. So I love it. It is. And we'll add that to our new roadmap. Or do a pull request. Yeah. Any other questions? Anybody gonna go home and start making some display objects tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Emoji rain. All right, so here's some resources. As I said, all this stuff is uh, my slides and everything else are out there. And Matt, you're next. All right, thanks. Thank you, guys.